if, if you have a material conception of the atom where there is some kind of a substance that the atom is made of and the electron is the surface of that substance, then if you have a wave in the substance, then there's no, there's no ambiguity. It's like the atom itself is resonating and that the stuff of the atom is what it is. And if yeah. you look into the nucleus, then the nucleus could just be a different part of the standing wave and you can have this kind of resonant conception of an object down there that is self-encompassing where you don't need to have a different medium. It just is the medium. It is, it is. Yeah, what yeah. It is. Very good. You got, you got it. You got it. And uh, the, the, you know, the proton is a different stuff. It's much, uh, uh, much denser and, and, uh, it, it has its own, uh, wave description. It's a different stuff. Uh, we don't know what that stuff is, except we know a lot about it, and that's a uh, that's, that's a at thing least that... a step in the right direction. I mean, as long as you know a lot about it, you can probably go back and figure out what the stuff is. But I don't want to get too lost in this sidetrack because I think that what's really valuable right here is that we're walking through the way that your interpretation of collective electrodynamics plays with Clauser's experiment. Yeah. And I don't want to get yeah. too lost in the philosophy because we'll lose the thread of that. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, I try to point out when, where the edge is of what we know. And there's no point trying to solve the stuff we don't know in the, in one hour because it's, <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's one of our favorites. You know, my, uh, forgive me because my, my entire, background like my phd is hard material science you know and it's resonant material science too like i worked with the atomic force microscope you know and, oh, and every, yeah. everything yeah. to me um i studied actually water's uh, uh resonant behavior in different confinement structures and so forth uh -huh. and so it's hard for me to ever not think about things in terms of especially when i think about uh things that are resonating you know it's a very it's very difficult so so you must forgive me but i'm always trying to uh come down to what these materials could actually be doing. And I don't expect us to come to an answer. I just can't stop playing with it. So Yeah. Well, it, it, I have a material view of the electron. It's a wave and it's its own stuff. So it isn't, it isn't uh, depend on being in something uh, to have its own wave. And it can spread out and, you know, have a longer wavelength and it can, and it can be cooped up and its energy goes up. And so all of that is, is intuitive. You, you, don't have to, you don't have to go far from where you've been to get that picture. Uh, but you have, to, you have to admit there's this stuff that the electron wave is made of. And uh, I call it the electron <laughs> <laughs> to me that's yeah that yeah. works that works yeah. fine yeah yeah uh, uh so anyway we got that now let's take let just take that picture and say suppose now i have another charge someplace and i wiggle it how does that interact with an electron in an atom and that's the thing that, that Schrodinger figured out, that it's coupled with the vector potential from the electromagnetic wave. And what's that? Well, there's a deeper question there about how, how does it get from here to there, and is it in something? But let's just take the, the observed fact that it, it has a delay getting there, but it's a wave of the vector potential and it doesn't have energy until it interacts with something. So it's really a, a, a placeholder for the, the influence of a current here at a distance. Well, when you, when you write down the expression for the propagation of the wave, it's very interesting that it has a solution for a wave that propagates forward in time and the wave that propagates backward in time. And if you superimpose the two of them, you get a standing wave. This sounds very Feynman. 
Feynman, Feynman, how do you say it? Sorry. Feynman, yeah. Well, Dick, yeah, he was a colleague of mine. Unfortunately, he's not with us anymore, but uh, a wonderful, wonderful guy. And um, he and and uh, Wheeler, when he was a grad student, did um, some some work where they they did that forward and backward in time stuff. Uh, pe- people before them had tried something. The it, they did it the way they did it. It didn't quite get them there, and so they gave up on it. And on the other hand, it stayed with Feynman's diagrams that he's famous for, that people use for fundamental particles and stuff. Uh, so it's there in that thinking, but in a odd way. So I won't go there because um, it will get lost. <laughs> but um, uh, Gilbert Lewis had the clearest uh, view of the of the thing is absolutely marvelous and he actually worked through but he didn't get all the way there either uh i get a little further not all the way uh in the little green book and then that's uh, a little further still in the thing with john kramer do you think that i was it sorry, i don't want to totally derail you but like with gilbert lewis was it in some part because he was a chemist and he was outside of the, the hard physics community or? Yeah. He was a very independent thinker, even in chemistry. I mean, he came up with the, the, uh, uh, the covalent bond, which is all of life <laughs> is made with covalent bonds. And, uh, diamond, silicon, all of those materials are made with covalent bonds. And he invented the covalent bond. So he had to have some some wave picture of how that all could work. And so you could kind of think that the two electrons, if they got in phase just right, they could peacefully coexist. But if they didn't get in phase right, they would might repel each other. So uh, how would you figure that out? Well, he never did figure it out. It took Heisenberg to figure it out, but um, but he had the idea, and uh, <clears throat> so you can imagine, you know, what that was back then, because this was in 1926. I quote I gave you. I mean, it's when all of this was happening, and uh, and he had a a deeper insight physical insight and heisenberg went off on the math route and and that ended up taking over because they couldn't understand physically what was going on we still don't uh but the fact that the math works the way it does gives us a lot of hints about what's going on physically but it doesn't really get us there yet but that's that's the thing for the next generation to figure out yeah and the physicists the work, won't kids. get it because they won't let the next generation do anything different than just grind on their statistics mm. but but anyway let's just do the photon because this is this is really important so I, I, only thing i have in the entire universe is two atoms and I have one that's in uh, the first excited state and the other one that's in the ground state. And they're far enough apart that the only thing that matters is the vector potential between the two. There's no, not enough wave function overlap or static electricity. That's way down in the noise. And so what I have is the dynamic coupling due to the propagation of the vector potential. Okay, so... This this excited atom, let's say it has a little ground state in it, so then it starts to oscillate. And that's the source of a vector potential which propagates. And now that starts to interact with the other atom. 
And the way it can interact is it starts mixing the excited state with the ground state, because that's the only thing at that frequency. Okay. Well, you say, what's wrong with that? It, it just propagates out there, and, and the, uh, <clears throat> uh, the vector potential uh, just puts energy into that state, and that energy comes out of this state, uh, and uh, so it makes a transition. All the energy from here goes over there. Yeah. That's half the story. But this atom here, the only way it can lose energy is if there's a vector potential that interacts with it to take energy away. Well, the only way it turns out, the only vector potential that can do that, if you only have the other atom, is the advanced potential that happens when this one starts the process. So that's before it got to. So it's just exactly what Gilbert Lewis said. He must have had this in his mind when he, when he wrote what he wrote. And so that thing is a it looks like a standing wave but it has the vector potential at the source atom from the receiver that sucks energy out and vector potential from the source at the receiver that builds it up and they're both exactly equal and, and opposite in time and opposite in size so they do the right thing. And if you just write it down, that's what it does. So, and there's no other way, there's no other way to conserve energy. 